waiting for the trap door to open up on Philly Riv, just like it always does yep. here in Southern California. And it hasn't opened yet. Honestly, he won a game that they Chargers would have lost 50 different more acrobatic <laughs> ways than they won it. Absolutely. Right? Yep. I mean, honestly, just when last week I'm like, it's clearly not Phil because he hasn't had any of the problems in Indianapolis like, say, the Chargers have always had their most inventive ways to lose. And then he had the most Charger end-of-game drive, an eight-play, 14-snap, six-penalty drive in which they did go for it on fourth down to keep the ball away from Aaron Rodgers, picked it up, and still gave it back to Aaron Rodgers with a timeout and too much time left on the clock. That was such a Chargers way to actually lose a game, and he won it. Because that kid, Valdez Scantling, who had a great catch to help force overtime, just had the ball knocked loose. And it just happens, which is what Aaron yeah. Rodgers was pointing out. Just happens. Just happens. So these things happen. Yeah, it bounces a weird way. Right. So, I don't know. And, and then, you know, the I know it's the fantasy conundrum, but it was Jonathan Taylor's day yep. this past Sunday. It was Naheem Hines. They hit him with the Hines against Tennessee, and that's a huge Week 12 game. Tennessee versus Indianapolis, which, by the way, is the current 4-5 matchup. These two teams appear to be on a total collision course to face a third time. And I don't know who to choose in that game. I was going to say, what's your answer for Jeff's question, too? I don't – well, I would choose Seattle. I would choose Seattle. Really? Yeah. I think I would choose Indy. I would choose Seattle because I think that they have much better weapons. I, I, I mean, I don't trust their T. defense. T.Y. Hilton at I some point. Indi- uh, Seattle's defense, defense. I don't know, man. Stout. Seattle's defense could have just taken a little bit of a turn. Maybe. Yeah, but I mean, using- Seattle. Se- hold on a second. Se- no, no, it's okay. Seattle's. De- I'm just on a roll. Seattle's defense, <laughs> or at least I think I am. <laughs> Seattle's defense this past week just took Kyler Murray out, and we saw. Jamal Adams and Carlos Dunlap wasn't around the first time they played zero hits on – zero hits, not sacks, zero touches of Kyler Murray, and they beat him up this past time around. Dunlap seals the game on a sack on a three-man rush. Jamal Adams now is solidifying – you can't just say the back end. It's just everything as a whole because he's everywhere. And Russell Wilson can beat you with your – his feet in a way that Phil, you know, Phillip creates opportunities other quarterbacks don't take advantage of with his arm angle, right? Where he throws it because he said that he used to have to rest the ball in the palm of his hand and throw it sidearm as a kid. That's the way that he got used to throwing a football as a kid because he was he needed to do that to figure out how to find a hole in the offensive line to, to play football. That was his. That's why he throws it the way that he does. Russell creates opportunities by extending plays and running around. And DK Metcalf, you know how much man love I have for that guy. And Tyler Lockett, those two guys, what do you got? You know, I know Michael Pittman is becoming significant there. And yep. I know T.Y. Hilton, when he's healthy, is still T.Y. Hilton. I just like the weapons there. And if the running game is... Uh, healthy in Seattle, Carson and Hyde. Now Collins, DJ Dallas, if you want to go even deeper, I, I would take Seattle. But Frank Reich is an excellent coach, and he is terrific. And I can't wait for this game. The Titans could come in and just roll Derrick Henry right down the alley and then see you later. I can't wait for this one. That's a big Week 12 game. Big game. I know. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.